Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today we're going to talk about how to automatically map samples in Contact. Uh, unbeknownst to most people, Contact 6, this is, uh, actually has the facility to be able to map samples based on pitch detection and uh, amplitude detection. Uh, basically, we're talking about a kind of mapping that happens uh, algorithmically. It has nothing to do with the file name. You're not doing any tagging. You're just um, throwing a bunch of samples at it, and it automatically figures out what pitches they are and maps them correctly. OK, so let's get started. So the truth is that what I just said is not exactly correct. I said contact automatically has the capability to do that. But uh, what actually has the capability to do that is contact creator tools, which is kind of like a, a sidecar app that ships with contact six. So if you have the full version of contact six, you also have creator tools, uh, even if you've never opened it or used it before. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open my applications directory. Basically, you want to figure out where your uh, Native Instruments stuff got installed. You want to find that folder, and uh, you want to look in there for Creator Tools, which is this weird other app that most people never launch. So if you don't know what Creator Tools is, uh, it was launched as part of uh, Contact 6. And it's basically a way for us to peek inside uh, a contact instrument that's already loaded within Contact. So uh, Contact Creator Tools has like a bunch of different debugging uh, routines and uh, ways of manipulating a contact instrument. For any of them to work, basically, you have to have contact up and running, either as the standalone, like I have right now, or as a, you know, a plugin within your DAW. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do now that I've got it launched is uh, I'm going to do new instrument. Um, and I should say the samples I'm working with are a xylophone I sampled a while back. Uh, eventually, I'm going to release it as an instrument. But uh, yeah, in the meantime, we can do some experiments with it. So I've created a new instrument. And I go into Creator Tools. And we want to make sure that we're on the Instrument Editor tab. Uh, and we're just going to click here and make sure that we're, we've selected the instrument. In fact, if I change this to like xylophone test, we should see here that this instrument name has changed. And you see here, we can drill down and we can see the groups that have been defined. So for example, if I were to go into the group editor and change this to something, and then I click download, these buttons here are the download and upload um, buttons. Any changes that I make um, in contact uh, need to be downloaded uh, by clicking this. So there are a bunch of different functions here. There's KSP log, which is basically just a history of any message that was output by your instrument. Uh, there's KSP variables, which basically allows you to like look inside the instrument and see the value of any uh, variable as it's running. And then there's the third one, the one that we actually care about for this task, which is Lua script. Lua is a programming language that exists outside of the contact universe. Uh, there are a lot of different pieces of software that uh, use it as their internal scripting engine. If you use Reaper, the DAW, uh, Rescript, their internal scripting engine is based on Lua, um, and you know, as is Contacts. I should say there's a great um, manual for creator tools that explains a ton of this stuff, including the full syntax for Lua. I may actually end up making a separate video that's basically just talking about how you develop in Lua. Uh, it's a pretty simple language. It's pretty easy to learn. And once you wrap your head around it, you can do a lot of really powerful things uh, that you can't do from within Contact itself. For the purposes of this tutorial, we're just trying to do a map of these samples. Now, obviously, if I just take these samples and drag them into contact, they're going to be distributed pretty much randomly, right? We don't want that. We want this Lua script engine that's part of Creator Tools to actually do this work for us. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to look back in that original folder where uh, we had found Creator Tools, and we're going to go to factory content. Everything we're doing here is based on scripts that are actually provided by contact. Uh, we're going to go into uh, instrument editor. Lua scripts, tutorials, and here you can see that there are seven, uh, actually eight tutorials. Um, and they're all about things like mapping and detecting pitch and detecting levels. So if we were, for example, to pull this one, tutorial four, and all you do is you just drag it onto the Lua script uh, window. And if you click here, I think it actually opens it up in a text editor. And you can actually see the Lua script. This is the language. And what it's doing is it's pulling samples from a folder called Samples Tutorial 4. Um, specifically, it seems to be pulling electric piano samples. Um, it is analyzing the pitch. It's doing basically like a batch recognition of uh, the pitch. And it's storing it in this uh, table called Pitch Data. And then if we go down here, it is setting zone values based on that pitch data. So let's run it and see what happens. 
Okay, gives us a little uh, output. Include it says e piano created. Of course, we're not interested in electric piano, but we can still play with this. And um, let me actually get rid of this browser. I don't really need it. Uh, okay, and we need to click the upload button. And now we can see we've got an electric piano group. Okay, so that worked beautifully. If we want to change it so that it's not referencing some random sample that came bundled by native instruments, we can actually just change that directory. Uh, I don't recommend changing the Lewis scripts that were provided by native instrument because you may want to refer back to them, but you can make a copy of the script and modify it to your heart's content. Um, we're going to advance a little bit further down and we're actually just going to look at tutorial six, which is samples auto mapping. Bring that in here and we can look here and let's just kind of walk through it and kind of try to figure out what the logic of the script is so we understand it a little bit better. Again, it's pulling samples. Uh, this time it's pulling them from a folder called tutorial six. Uh, and it's doing two detections. It's doing a detection of RMS, which is the loudness, the, the volume level. It's storing the results of that detection in something called level data, which I believe is a table. It's doing the same kind of pitch detection we did in that last script. Uh, so now we've got these two data structures, level data and pitch data. And if we go down here, we can see that it's creating a bunch of zones based on the pitch data. And then it kind of goes back through and it looks at the level data. You can see here it's referencing the level data and it is splitting up the samples based on their volume. Uh, let's, uh, let's give this script a spin. Okay, let's look at, okay. So it's created a group called ePiano2. By the way, you can kind of just drill down here and see all of the zones that it created. It's uh, not the most beautiful way of seeing your, your instrument. Okay, I'm gonna hit upload or push, I guess is what they call it. And look back at contact. And you can see here, it's actually created a piano sample that is um, split up based on both pitch and volume, which is exactly what we want. So how to make it work with our own samples? Well, that's actually super simple. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this samples auto mapping Lua file, and I'm just gonna paste it into my project directory here. And I'm just gonna call it my script so that I can keep it separate. And you see here where they were referencing samples tutorial six, um, we're going to do the same thing, except our folder is just called samples. These directories, by the way, are uh, relative to the path that the script is in. So my script is here and samples is a subdirectory of that folder. So this should, yeah, this should work perfectly. And if I want, I can um, change the name of the group so that it's not ePiano2, xylophone. Okay, we're gonna go back into creator tools. I'm going to drag this we want to make sure that this changed here. And uh, I'm going to clear the log, press play. Xylophone created. You can now press push. Now let's go check out contact. And there you have it. How beautiful is that? And just like that, we've mapped an entire sample without doing any kind of tagging or uh, sorting or anything like that. One thing worth noting about this is uh, it doesn't seem to be adjusting these points based on the actual amplitude very much. So uh, like I'm, I'm noticing these are all pretty evenly spaced and definitely, I mean, there's no way that I played my samples that evenly. So uh, it's probably just doing a linear distribution. So you may want to adjust these velocity points. Still, when you uh, are putting together a sample and you don't have time to uh, do that kind of in-depth tagging, uh, this is a huge time savings and it's really you know, beneficial to, to work this way. Okay, uh, hope this was helpful. If you enjoyed this, it'd be really great if you could hit like. And if you've not done so already, I highly recommend subscribing. I've got a ton more videos uh, about contact and about other stuff coming up in the month of August. Um, yeah, see you soon.